So I'd like to zoom out a little bit and talk with some perspective about what it actually means to build a better human or to think about living longer. And I want to talk about legacy. So consider for a moment that you are the direct design of your parents. And I don't mean because they chose each other to mate with and you, know, you have some vague idea of how your kids are going to come out. I mean you are the product of purposeful design. What would that mean to you? What sort of expectations might that set up or pressure? Do you feel gratitude, maybe some resentment? Some of us already feel that when they send us to particular schools or want us to be particular professions. But it's an interesting thought experiment because our descendants are likely going to be feeling this in a much different way. So we're here today because we're united in our interest in radical wellness. And we've heard from a lot of luminaries about the ways that we're quantifying and modifying our bodies, our environments, policies, companies all with the effort to improve our wellness and optimize for performance. Now, as a young woman, as an athlete, I love this idea. The notion of radical wellness really speaks to me. I think of increasing my fertility for many more years so I don't have to have kids in the next five years. I think about lifting 200 pounds when I'm 90. I think about picking up and playing with my great-grandchildren when I'm 100. Who wouldn't want optimal performance and health or to live a longer and better life? But when it comes to modifying the basic building blocks of what makes us human, our genes, and inherently our cells and our organs, we're taking it a step further. A new and improved human genome will likely change the human image. Now you think back to like the 1800s, and you see photographs that are old of a 30-year-old man. He looks very different from a 30-year-old man today, especially the ones with their polos and their boat shoes on Nantucket. And I can imagine that 200 years from now, a 30-year-old will look very different Maybe they'll look like 18-year-olds, who knows? So the human image will change, and with the physical will also be the emotional, the social, the cultural. Sports will change. You know, we're all astounded by Tom Brady being the greatest of all time. Not actually a Pats fan, but you know, we're in Boston. So he's the greatest of all time, and he's 40, and everyone's like, whoa, 40, best QB. But the next Tom Brady, maybe he'll be playing into his 50s or 60s or 70s. We'll have NFL players that are really outlasting today's athlete. So when we alter the fundamental building blocks that make us who we are, we're also changing the nature of our humanity in a lot of different ways. So the question is, if we can do it, if we have the means, should we design a legacy that will outlast the current parameters of human existence? So for the small group of diseases that are the result of losing the genetic lottery, this is a revolutionary moment. George mentioned gene therapy trials that he has ongoing. Um, currently, there's a number of clinical trials in patients around the world that are benefiting from changes to their genome that's, that are improving their diseases and their health outcomes. But our future is much bigger than that. The scope is much broader. For example, there's a class of rare protective gene variants. These are things like associating with low risk of cancer or building extra strong bones, extra lean muscles, viral resistance? What if we were to install these gene variants in ourselves to offer lifelong protection against infection, against Alzheimer's, against aging, perhaps? Can we prevent the propagation of disease in future human generations, like we've eradicated, like we've eradicated many of the infectious diseases of before? And if we can, do we have a moral imperative to do so? And how does this change the human experience? All of this starts with a cell, the fundamental unit of life. And within that cell, the DNA, of course, which is the blueprint that life is built from. But when I think of DNA, I also think of how it embodies a lineage. It connects us to our past, to our ancestors. It connects us to the legacy of our future. And when we begin changing these units that make us human, in a way, we're disrupting that connection. So imagine 200 years from now, you're doing your DNA test, you're trying to trace your ancestry, but you know what, we've scrambled the genes so we don't necessarily know where we came from or who our ancestors are. We start losing this connectivity. I think about Rodrigo's talk and these epigenetic memories and how does that impact the way that we think about that, the way that we place ourselves in history, in the history of DNA, in the history of life. 
we lose longitudinal data, but we gain a stronger legacy. And we're holding the evolution of humans in our hands. There's a quote that I love from the famed author of Lolita, Vladimir Nabokov. He said, our existence is but a brief crack of light between two eternities of darkness. Now, evidenced by the talks today, we talk a lot about how to preserve that flame of life. We tend to it, we feed it, we try to keep it from being extinguished. We often fear or dread the darkness that comes after, but rarely do we consider the darkness that precedes our birth. Rarely do we think about our parents who are waiting our arrival before we're born, or the empty car seat waiting to take us home from the hospital. And there are all these forces that are at play before we ever, ever, ever take our first breath. And we're, they're currently out of our grasp, but increasingly closer to being able to be manipulated by us so that we can build a different future. Critics would argue that we should leave this up to nature. I feel like this is one thing that comes up often when we talk about modifying humans, especially modifying DNA. They say, you know, it's natural, we should, we should leave it as part of life, aging in particular. But I think the whole concept of natural is really just an illusion. So much of our world we manipulate, we engineer to suit our needs, often just for convenience to support our busy lives. And of course there's the tummy tucks and hearing aids and prosthetics, things that we don't need to survive, but they make our lives better. We've been doing unnatural things to our bodies for centuries. So what if we marry this perspective to a more thoughtful intention and think about redesigning the future human species? Can we apply this to re-envision the species and apply it to our children and our children's children and their children and uh, really impact their ability to thrive? We can think about a future where humans are free of hereditary disease and ones that will outperform and outlast current humanity. So in 50 years time, if we're not already tinkering with the germline of humans, uh, and when I say this, I largely think about those strongly genetic diseases that are universally fatal like Huntington's. If we're not already doing that, I can imagine a scenario where we're getting staged genetic treatments much like we get immunizations. And similar to immunizations, which are training our immune system to battle you know, things that we have in our environment, we're actually training our DNA to build cells, to build organs that will make us more resilient. Uh, ultimately, a, bot a body that's more equipped to handle the stressors of daily industrialized life. Perhaps take us beyond Earth. To avoid known genetic traps that inevitably lead to disease and enable creation of a sturdier physical body that will take us well into our 70s, 80s, and beyond. So as a scientist, I get really excited about this future, not just because of what it allows us to discover, but how it allows us to grow and to evolve, perhaps to take us to another planet. As a daughter, I'm hopeful we can bring about radical wellness sooner so that my parents can continue to thrive uh, physically and cognitively for decades to come, much like David's dad. You know, I think about my parents holding their, meeting their great-grandchildren and holding their legacy in their arms. And as a person, as a future mother, I think about creating a world where hereditary diseases are eradicated and a world where we really have created a stronger human species, a more resilient human species, one where a greater health span matches the greater lifespan that we're beginning to see. Thank you.